Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Gopi Jana Vala Bha Kiri Vardhari Gopi Jana Vala Bha Kiri Vardhari In Yashoda Nandana, Burja Jana Ranjana, Yashoda Nandana, Burja Jana Ranjana, Yamuna Tira Vanachari, Yamuna Tira Vanachari, Jaya Radha Madhava Punjabi Hari, Jaya Radha Madhava Punjabi Hari. Gopi Chana Vala Bha Giri Vardhari Jaya Gopi Chana Vala Bha Giri Vardhari Yashoda Nandana Braja Jana Ranjana Yashoda Nandana Bhajajana Ranjana Yamuna Tira Vanachari Yamuna Tira Vanachari Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram. Jaya Radha Madhava Punjabi Hari Jaya Radha Madhava Punjabi Hari Jaya Mr. Pad Paramahansa Padurikaya Charja Ashto Tarata Shri Shri Mahatavayan Grace Srila A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Bhavabhad Ki Jai
Iskan Bibiti founder Acharya Shira Prabhupad Kijai. Jai Om Vishnu Bhad Paramahansa Paradrika Acharya Ashtotar Tata Sri Sri Mara Divine Grace Srila Bhakti Siddhanta. So is what he talk over Kijai. Ananda Koti Vaishnavinda Kijai. Nama Acharya Srila Haridas talk over Kijai. Sri Upadesha Mita Kijai. All oh, some of the bodies divide. Jai. Some of the bodies divide. Jai. All glory to the sum of the bodies. All glory to the sum of the bodies. All glory to the sum of the bodies. All glory to Sri Guru and Goranga. Okay, before we begin, a few notes on pronunciation. The tendency is to say Namaste Saraswati Deve Goro. You can't say it. It has to be a long A at the end because it's of Saraswati Bhakti Siddhanta. Namaste Saraswati Deve. I know it's a little harder to say, but it has to be like that. Not that the Deve, well, you, nobody here was around when it used to be Devam for many, many years until the letters came out and we got this letter that Prabhupada had written saying, no, it should be Deve. So for the last 12 years and 15 years in this guy, it was Devam, but that's not the issue. It's the Saraswate, which ma matches with Deve. So the, it yes, it is. It should be Sar Saraswati. Yeah, I've heard that a lot. Okay. It tends to, you tend to fall into it because that, we're more common with that name. And it's Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati. Yes. Yes, Saraswati. Look it up in the songbook. <coughs> and what else? Oh, yeah, it's common also because of the melody. Hey, Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda. Nityananda. You know, Nityananda becomes Nityananda. So try to remember that one. And, and if you listen to Vishnu John uh, uh, Kirtan, which is super ecstatic, he's got this thing with Shivasati. Shivasati Gore. But you can't have Shivasati because it's a long A. Shivasati. And Sri Vas Adi Gaur. Yeah, so try to remember that. Plus the classic Vancha Kalpatarubhishcha. No one says it, but it should be. Because Vancha is a whole different word. It means cheating. Vancha means desire. So. <laughs> small cheating trees. Vancha, Vanchaka, Alpa. Alpa means small. Vanchakalpa. Vanchakalpatarubhishcha. I mean, we know what you have in your heart, but that's what comes out. So. I'm not saying you did it, but I'm just... Okay. Guru, yeah, you're calling me, you're calling me a cow. Or something. <laughs> I'm sorry? Tech six. Yeah, we're still... Uh, there we go. All right. So let me find that, and then we'll get going. All righty. Okay, we're almost through with this purport, actually. So I need to... Sorry about that. Okay. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya On this 31st day of December 2018 in San Diego, we're reading from the Sri uh, Upadesha Amrita, the Nectar of Instruction, uh, by Rupa Goswami. Sri Rupa Goswami, translation and commentary by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. And we are still studying verse number six. Drishtai Sobhava Janitai Vapashascha Doshai. All right, I'm going to put it on pause there until Janardin gets it. Can you channel with us, Janardin? What did you use to write it on the board? Oh, the actual book? I have it. Oh, okay. I have it in here. I just haven't had time to really look at it. I've just copied Yeah, but it's not there on your screen right now? Yeah, right it's out. Oh, okay. All right, let's give, it. let's give it a shot. Drishtai Sobhava Janitai Vapashascha Doshai. Na prakvatattva miha bhakta janasya pashyate. 
Gangam basam na kalubud buddha pe na pankar. Brahma dravatta mapagat chati nirna dharmai. Translation. Being situated in his original Krishna conscious position, a pure devotee does not identify with the body. Such a devotee should not be seen from a materialistic point of view. Indeed, one should overlook a devotee's having a body born in a low family, a body with a bad complexion, a deformed body, or a diseased or infirm body. According to ordinary vision, such imperfections may seem prominent in the body of a pure devotee, but despite such seeming defects, the body of a pure devotee cannot be polluted. It is exactly like the waters of the Ganges, which sometimes, during the rainy season, are full of bubbles, foam, and mud. The Ganges waters do not become polluted. Those who are advanced in spiritual understanding will bathe in the Ganges without considering the condition of the water. And we are reading the last couple of paragraphs of this purport. Those who think that Krishna consciousness is limited to a certain section of people, a certain section of devotees, or a certain tract of land, are generally prone to see the external features of the devotee. Such neophytes, unable to appreciate the exalted service of the advanced devotee, try to bring the Maha Bhagavat to their platform. We experience such difficulty in propagating this Krishna consciousness all over the world. Unfortunately, we are surrounded by neophyte godbrothers who do not appreciate the extraordinary activities of spreading Krishna consciousness all over the world. They simply try to bring us to their platform, and they try to criticize us in every respect. We very much regret their, native ac their naive activities and poor fund of knowledge. An empowered person who is actually engaged in the confidential service of the Lord should not be treated as an ordinary human being. For it is stated that unless one is empowered by Krishna, one cannot spread the Krishna consciousness movement all over the world. When one thus criticizes a pure devotee, he commits an offense, Vaishnav Aparad, that is very obstructive and dangerous for those who desire to advance in Krishna consciousness. A person cannot derive any spiritual benefit when he offends the lotus feet of a Vaishnav. Everyone should therefore be very careful not to be jealous of an empowered Vaishnav or a Shuddha Vaishnav. It is also an offense to consider an empowered Vaishnav an object of disciplinary action. It is offensive to try to give him advice or to correct him. One cannot distinguish between a neophyte Vaishnav and an advanced Vaishnav by their activities. The, one can, excuse me, one can distinguish be, between a neophyte Vaishnav and an advanced Vaishnav by their activities. The advanced Vaishnav is always situated as the spiritual master, and the neophyte is always considered his disciple. The spiritual master must not be subjected to the advice of a disciple, nor should a spiritual master be obliged to take instructions from those who are not his disciples. This is the sum and substance of Srila Rupa Goswami's advice in this sixth verse. Om Jnana Timarandasya Jnananjana Shalakaya Chakshu Unmilatam Mena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha I was born in the darkness of ignorance, but my spiritual master Srila Prabhupada opened my eyes with the torchlight of knowledge. I offer my humble obeisance unto him and all members of Sri Parampara. So on a personal note, um, I don't know if this rang true for you or you understand the implications here, but the service of editing the writings of the spiritual master is a very kind of delicate service. It's an important service to have because um, those writings are going to be spread all over the world and, and obviously this movement rests on the literature. Um, back in uh, 1975, there was a huge uh, festival in Mayapur. It was one of the first really big festivals and it's been as bigger, bigger and bigger over the years. So I, did, I went to that one, but I wasn't on this morning walk, but Jayavada Das Brahmachari, then uh, the main editor of uh, Srila Prabhupada's books, uh, he, he was just a Brahmachari and there were all these big sannyasis, but he went on the walk anyway. And he, uh, in those days, basically it was mostly sannyasis and people in high management uh, who went on, on the morning walks. And uh, so he asked Prabhupada a burning question that he had. And that was, uh, 
And he asked it very delicately. He said, we read about how the uh, Mahabhagavat, Acharya, is uh, beyond the four defects. And yet we find that sometimes the Acharya will misquote a verse or something like that. Now, how are we supposed to think about this? Because this was a crit a cr a critical for his own peace of mind in doing his service. He'd already been editing for years, but obviously this was something he needed to resolve. And so Srila Prabhupada made the point. He had just uh, been giving classes on the beginning of the Chaitanya Charitamrita. Now, the beginning of the Chaitanya Charitamrita has what is called the Mangala Charan, which are a series, a classic, classically a, any major Vaishnav work or Vedic work in general begins with a series of verses setting out the subject matter, uh, offering obeisances, uh, offering glorification, and another thing is uh, benedictions to the readers. Um, so the, uh, the Mangala Charan in Chaitanya Charitamrita goes through very systematically in glorifying uh, the, first actually uh, the Panchatattva, Gornatai, then it gives uh, three or four or five verses of who Lord Chaitanya is, why did he come, his internal and external reason. Then it glorifies Nityananda, a bunch of verses, must be familiar with that. And then there's two verses about Advaita Acharya. So Prabhupada, he had just given a class on this verse about Advaita Acharya. Uh, and the beginning is Advaitad, Harin Advaitad, uh, Acharyam Bhakti Shankshanat. I forget the rest of the verse, but Prabhupada quoted that, and that second line was what he cited here. And he said, No, the Acharya is known by his uh, preaching activities. Uh, Acharya Bhakti Shankshana. Bhakti Shankshana means to propagate Krishna consciousness. And Advaita Acharya, if for no other reason, for bringing Lord Chaitanya was, uh, to, to the planet, was so instrumental in spreading Krishna consciousness in many other ways. So the point is, is that Prabhupada declined to, to uh, emphasize that point of beyond the four defects, which means make, doesn't make any mistakes, and then it, mo it moved into a discussion of infallibility and omniscience. Omniscience, because they all go together. And Prabhupada was very adamant about the fact that, no, that the spiritual master is not omniscient like Krishna is. Anyway, it's a long discussion I won't get into. But you can see the, what's going on here. I mean, I've, I've been working with you know, Prabhupada's words. Even in those days, I was working very much with the, the uh, lectures Every, every Back to Godhead magazine, you know, those of you who have ever read the magazine, know it begins with a, uh, an article by Prabhupada, almost always a lecture he gave somewhere that's been edited up for the BTG. That's the first thing people read. So or it doesn't take, take much uh, research to go into the database and find the lecture it was coming from and see the, the tremendous editing that had to be taken. It's a different amount of editing, someone speaking off the cuff rather than dictating carefully word by word, you can imagine. But even, even so, uh, in every case, Prabhupada's uh, uh, books require uh, much editing, which he approved of. He approved the first cano to be redone, even though he'd printed the whole thing, he'd edited himself, he'd gone over it, but he, he admits, you know, he says right at the beginning, and the, I think in the preface, uh, about uh, the, the uh, deficiencies of his own English. And he quotes that verse, Tad Bhagavasago Janataka Viplava, which is precisely about that. Maybe the devotees don't understand. Tad Bhagavasago Janataka Viplava, Yasman Pati Shlokam Abhadavachapi. Pati Shlokam Abhadavachapi means although every shloka, assuming it's a you know, Shastric writing, uh, is miscomposed, abhadnavatibi, it's not bound together properly. In other words, there's some, some fault in it. Still, if it wholly and solely deals with the subject matter of Krishna, Krishna devotees, Krishna bhakti, and so forth, then the great uh, souls will accept it and hear it and chant it and like that. So Prabhupada uh, produced his, his first volumes on that basis, and uh, knowing that, that uh, it, it needed to be done, it needed to be in whatever English he could bring forth, and he would hope that Krishna would give him more facility later, and he did. He gave him the professor of English to help edit it, you know, which he did. So I was very conscious as I'm reading this. Uh, it, is, it is offensive to give advice to, uh, to advise him or to correct him. So if, I'm, if I change a word around on, on the page, am I not correcting him? What to do? But... 
if he specifically <laughs> requests you to do something like that, then it has to be done, of course, very carefully with all kinds of caveats. But that's the, uh, the service. So I just wanted to add that because I'm dealing with this every day, what to leave and what not to leave. What, you know, what, what is... <laughs> so just to let you know. Okay, back to these last two paragraphs. So the, this verse uh, is very important because it, it, it's one of the verses that deals with the relationship between the devotees. There's three, the dati, the gunnati, guya, makati, pichati. The first is the, um, uh, the six loving exchanges, which were uh, mentioned last night. And they're meant to be engaged in with devotees, with devotees. <laughs> if you engage in these, they're going on everywhere to some degree or another. And they're simply deepening people's uh, entanglement in the material world. Because this love or affection for materialists is, is part of the hard knots in the, in the heart that keep you there. Prasangam madalam pasham atmana kavayovida. Prasangam madalam pasham, the very strong ropes of attraction and affection for the material things and for material people and so forth. Which, of course, often comes into the opposite. You know, the classic, you know, I love you so much, love you so much, and then there's, there's some unfaithfulness, and I, I hate you, I hate you, let's have, get a divorce. So in the material world, it's, it's all very ephemeral and artificial. So these loving exchanges are between devotees, uh, priti lakshanam. And then, what, but how to deal with different devotees? Krishnati yasigati tangmana sadriyate. This is the last verse, verse 5. Okay, a devotee who just chants the name once, Krishna iti. Krishna iti yasigati tam comes on his, his, from his voice. Manasadriyate, you offer uh, respects in the mind. That means anybody at all passes by the Harinam party. Tonight we'll get all kinds of people who will give us a Hare Krishna. Praise be the Lord. So many, so many lifetimes of, of uh, sinful reaction have been eradicated by that one chanting. You know, this is a very fortunate person, but in the mind, you know. But if someone actually is serious, takes diksha, and then we offer Vantra Kapodaribhisha, physically offer, and with, with respect. But if someone is very, very experienced in bhajan, it says, Shu Shu Shaya Bhajana Vigyam, uh, bhajana vigya means realized in their bhajan. In other words, a very high devotee, or Mahabhagavat. Then one should be shushushaya. Now this shushushaya is a key word for us. It means hearing with rapt attention and then serving the instructions, which often means serving the person himself. So that shushushaya is right at the beginning of Bhagavatam. Second verse. Uh, uh, yeah. Means that this Bhagavatam is all you need, really. If every other book was destroyed, said Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, but the Bhagavatam remained, thing would be just fine. Probably be better than they are now because you got all this nonsense literature. But uh, so Sadyo means quickly, immediately. Ridjavarujate, the Lord, the Ishwar, is manifest in the heart. For uh, one who hears this Bhagavatam with that attitude, that, that, that ardent, you know, absorbed, uh, uh, receptive mind. Probably called it the, uh, uh, what did he say, um, submissive or reception. The mind is the thing that's, that's, that's rebellious, that's you know, wandering here and there. That's not, so, the, so if one is uh, submissive, means the mind is submitting. It's just, it's just a... Uh, a pure medium. It's not interfering with the, with the reception. It's going straight into the intelligence. And not. So, Shushusho, Ishrade, Rinjan Taksto becomes manifest in the heart. Tachanat uh, means very quickly. So, uh, that's also repeated in the second chapter, where how are you going to get the attraction for hearing? That's the most valuable thing you have your attraction for hearing Hare Krishna for chanting and hearing. And the more the traction you have, the more that you're advancing. And the more that your traction from matter is going down. It's a very simple equation. How to get it? Who knows? Punyatid. Yes, key verse there. So again, the word shushu shodadhana say, hearing carefully from the... The, the, the great devotees uh, with faith, Shuddhanas, Vasudeva, Kataruchi, Syan. Syan or Syat means to come into being, the Sanskrit word is used all the time. So, what comes into being? Vasudeva, Kataruchi. 
Who can analyze that? You know, Vasudev, Kata, you know, and Ruchi. Can you develop a case for being... About Vasudev, Kata, yeah, that's, about, that's what they're looking for. Vasudev, Syan, comes into being, is developed by this hearing and service. Don't forget that aspect of Shushu Show. It's not just hearing and then going off and doing something. It's hearing and taking the instruction within and then transforming one's activities to conform to what you heard. Syan uh, the uh, uh, service to the Mahatmas, Punya uh, Tirtas, who are actually walking Tirtas, walking Tirtas, they establish Tirtas wherever they go. So then with that desire to hear, you can get the sword of remembrance, which was in the previous verse. If you can remember Krishna, if you develop more and more your remembrance of Krishna, then you cut with that sword of remembrance all of these knots in the heart. It's all destroyed, all of these things binding us to this world. It's the most valuable thing that's cut. And also the, the sword is mentioned in the 15th chapter. That's the sword of detachment, but that also develops. To cut this, this banyan tree we've been in since time immemorial, the upside down banyan tree, you know, the reflected banyan tree in the beginning of the 15th chapter. How do you get out of it? You can't just go from one branch to the other and expect you, you go forever. You have to cut it at the root with the sword of detachment, which is developed by hearing also. So, uh, back to our uh, fifth verse. Yeah. Shushusheya bhajana vigyamananyamana nindadi shunya vidimipsa the sangha And we're back to the, being devoid of the, of the tendency to blaspheme. Nindadi shunya. Adi means it, it comes with the blaspheme, with the, with the acts of, of enviousness and everything else. Uh, shunya. The great devotees don't do that. They're completely satisfied in Krishna. They're not envious of anybody. They feel themselves the lowest of the low. I was just studying one verse in the Padyavali. It's a super verse. Padamaka. This thing, listen to the artistic of the Sanskrit. This is Rupa Goswami's favorite verses. And each one of them has a certain special thing about it, that why it made it into the book, you know, into his pile of, of, of leaves, you know, that he got. So, padamakaru niko onabavatpara, padamashocha bato, nachamatpara, eti vichinta hare mahipamari, yuduchitam yadunata tadachara. There's no one more merciful than you. Padamakaru is supremely compassionate. Padamakaru, how do you know, nabavat, you, para. There's no one greater. They can never be. Known. And padamashochamato, more lamentable. Padamashochamato, nachamatpara. There's no one more lamentable, wretched than me. So he's set up this. Think of this. Think of this over carefully. Idivachincha hari mahipamare. Oh, hari, think of this carefully, over this carefully. And then, oh, yadunat, what are the yadus? Taruchi, yaduchitam, what is appropriate? Tadachara, please do that. In other words, then apply the proper means to, you know, purify me. <laughs> a very beautiful verse. So this is the nature of the great devotees. They're always putting themselves in this position, you know. And then what should I be? Please consider me, said the, the Mukunda Malak, King Kulashekar. Vritya, vritya, paricharika, vritya, 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 sabita, itimam, svodadokanana. We know das, das, anadasa. This is servant of the 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 servant. That's literally what he says. My, please make my life fruitful and think of me as the servant of the servant of the life. That's a very humble position. So, uh, Prabhupada is now, uh, in these last two paragraphs, he's talking about applying this verse to himself and how he's, you know, has been blasphemed by his god brothers. He felt he, he talks about him. One is, in, one is, he doesn't directly say me, but, but obviously he's speaking like that. We are surrounded, Prabhupada said, we are surrounded by neophyte God brothers who don't appreciate the extraordinary activity of spreading Krishna consciousness all over the world. So the point is, is that Prabhupada had to overlook all of, all of the defects of these prospective um, candidates for devotional service in order to preach. You know, he comes down into the middle of New York City, and here's people, have, they have, you know, they're eating meat, they have no culture, they're absolutely they're outcasts. There's two, you know, the outcast is, is two words, two different words. Outcast without an E at the end and outcast with an E at the end. And they actually mean different things. <laughs> I've discovered this over my years of studying the dictionary. So outcast, in, in, when it's described to India and everything, is, is with the E. And it also includes being cast out. Outcast simply means you're cast out 
of a, of a certain community. But outcast literally means you're outside of the, of the four recognized castes, Brahman, uh, Chatya, Vaishya, Shudra. So, uh, but still, you're living. What do they call them? Dalits? There's all kinds of words, something like that. Yeah, untouchables. Yeah. Can you imagine what that, how that would make you feel? Oh, that person, David Rutter, oh, he's untouchable. <laughs> In other words, <laughs> get out of here. <laughs> yeah. So, so that, you know, that's, that's super ignorant. So Prabhupada came into the world of the untouchables. <laughs> we're, 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 not, we're, we're totally, uh, you know, outside of the Vedic culture. And, and yet, on the basis of Shastra, Mami he's saying the Papayonis, you know, which is different interpretations sometimes Prabhupada said, yeah, those are beyond, beyond you know, they're not Shudras, Vaishas, and the women are considered also at the lower birth, you know. He said, but the, if they surrender unto me, they come to me. You know, the way the translation is, they can come to me. But they, they attain me, period, if they surrender, you know. What to speak of? Kirata, Hunanda, Pulinda, Pukasha, Abhira, Shambha, Yavanaka, Right in the Bhagavatam, Shukadeva's prayers in the second canto. He goes through a whole list of outcasts, those who are outside of India even, you know. The, you can almost recognize the names, the Hunas, the Huns, you know, like the Germanic peoples, the Kushas, that's, you can't recognize, but that's the Mongols, Mongolians, Chinese, all that group. And then the, the others also can be located. They're outside of India. But he says all of them, and the Anyas and others, papa, sinful. But if they take shelter of one who has taken shelter of the Supreme Lord, then they can be shudyanti, they can become purified. That's us. I have news, that's us. You know? And, and Prabhupada proved it. He proved it to himself that it was possible. You know, he had faith in the holy name. He had faith in that holy name as completely purifying. And on the basis of Shastra, he, he went, you know, he ventured outside of India, which had never been done before successfully, certainly, and uh, with Gaudiya Vaishnava philosophy. And he realized the, the, uh, this, you know, the truth of the verses in the Bhagavatam in this verse here. So we have to follow that. Uh, you know, and, and, and uh, appreciate the great power of uh, bhakti yoga when it's practiced properly under the guidance of a pure devotee. It can purify anyone. And there's so many cases in the, in the CC and in the Bhagavatam where that takes place. Jagai Made are the witnesses. There's that song, right? They're the evidence. Nityananda. Nityananda is the, is the all-merciful guru who approaches the lowest of the low, the, most, the outcasts, you know, those who had fallen from their culture, the, the Brahmins, Jagai Madai. And uh, by his mercy, uh, purifies them, and provided they're ready to agree to the caveats of not sinning anymore, chanting the holy name, surrendered, then they stay purified. That's the basis of this whole movement. So Prabhupada here is, is you know, showing the, the uh, great difference between himself and some of his godbrothers who... The tendency was, you know, to, to settle in when, they, when the great um, disintegration took place because they didn't follow Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati's instruction to establish the GBC, you know. And I'm telling you, this, this movement also almost split up, you know, into, uh, fragmented in the 80s when you had some, you know, people at the highest levels of management, the gurus got in, you know, didn't, they, they, they fell away from the strict practice. And uh, they had hundreds of thousands of followers, some of them, at that time. But because there was a GBC that was the ultimate managing authority that Prabhupada established, and because there were so many sincere senior devotees who weren't gurus, but were trying to hold everything together, it did hold together. And uh, so many thousands and millions of people have benefited since then and continue to benefit. So the, the, the key element is, you know, that Srila Prabhupada uh, is, is present in this movement. He's sustaining it day to day. And it's a transcendental movement. We don't think, you know, nobody dies, especially the great devotees, you know. We're still under the protection of Rupa Goswami and all the six, you know, the six Goswamis. If we want that protection, it means revering them, honoring them, and most importantly of all, hearing their words and trying to, with this shushu show, you know, uh, 
attitude, letting it come into our heart and purify the heart, especially Prabhupada's words in his books, which have been um, specifically rendered for us so that we can uh, uh, remain faithful and, and, and hang on to those lotus feet so that we can become successful in our attempt to transcend the material boundaries and, and uh, go back to Godhead and to also give that uh, opportunity to others. Okay, any questions on these points? All right, we, we'll just, we, we'll begin the next verse uh, on Monday, next Monday. We'll study the verse, but I want to chant it today because these, this verse and the next one, to me, are like the, the ones that... <laughs> the, one, the next one is seven. Next Monday. Next Monday. But, I'm, but since we have a little time, I'll just read it. You can't hurt. Oh, what happened to that? You mean the portable mic? Oh, it's here it is, right here. Oh, you have any questions or comments? Okay. We need to have a more formal way of engaging that mic, maybe. So, so this idea of, like, making mistakes, um, uh -huh. because... You said that Prabhupada, he didn't really get into all the, you know, this whole idea of, oh, the, the Acharya doesn't make mistakes, you know. But like it says right there in the Sri Upanishad that, oh, the conditioned souls, they're, these are uh, their yeah. characters so they yeah. make mistakes. So um, what Prabhupada was just referring to, oh, the Acharya is known by the preaching. His yeah, preaching. yeah, yeah. Um, but maybe you could, like, I don't know, expand on that idea more or, Maybe from different angles, a vision of the idea of the charya or the the, the liberated soul or the c not making mistakes. Because I don't know, it's a challenge. I mean, I mean, my spiritual master told me one time. He said that I made some mistakes, <laughs> <laughs> and then, anyways, I'm not going to get into the whole thing. But yeah. he said, "Oh, we need to come to the point where we make no mistakes." Uh -huh. Which, of course, that's like a really difficult point to come to. <laughs> That's what he told me. He said, "You need to come to the. We need to come to the point where we make no mistakes." Yeah. So maybe you could. Well, I mean, it, it's kind of a. Uh, it, it's 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 uh, a a, a um, adjustment in the mind where you say, "Well, what is actually a mistake?" You know, because in dealing with Prabhupada's, you know, English. I mean, he himself said. He said, right there, I know the, the, the you know, shortcomings of my own English. And what does that mean? It means there's some mistakes. You know? I mean, Prabhupada always, always quoted the verse in the Bhagavad Gita, 3 9, 4 9, sorry. Jamma karma me divyam yo janati tattvata. That's, that's the way he always quoted it. Even when, he's dig even when he was typing it, he typed through about the fourth, the fifth chapter. So that's in the fourth chapter, he's typing it. And you can see, he, ty he typed it that way, but I think then he corrected it. But he was so, he was so much into that, you know, and then whenever he quoted it, Janma Karma Me Divyam Yo Janati Tattvata, which, which I understand grammatically means the same thing as Janma Karma Chame Divyam Evam Yo Veti Tattvata. It's a little change in word order. He left one word out, the Charya. Big deal. But someone said, ah, there's a mistake. You know. But, but what we consider, you know, those of us who've had to deal with, with, you know, Prabhupada's English for so many years, is that the mistake is, a, a, a mistake would be um, deviating from the Shastra, deviating from, from the previous Acharyas and their, uh, the spirit of, especially, you know, in, in the modern age, as Prabhupada expresses in this purport we just read, how to spread Krishna consciousness in the present age to this present, uh, you know, uh, population. Oh, you know, he, as a sannyasi, he, he performed marriages. You know, sometimes it sounds kind of shocking. I, I, I married my disciples, meaning he performed the marriages. <laughs> so, which was totally, you know, that was a scandalous. Some of his godbrothers criticized him for that. Others criticized him for making Brahmins out of the Mleches. They're, they're not born in a Brahmin family. They can't be purified. Uh, sannyasis. Huh? 
the Brahmachavini ashram, you know, which is unheard of. Yeah, yeah. So, so from their point of view, oh, he's making all these mistakes. From, from, from his point of view, and from the, you know, palena parichiyate, which is an important phrase we should know, all know again, you know, palena parichiyate, which is Prabhupada's version of a, of a statement that says, one can understand the value of something by the effect, by the fruit. And the value was, Krishna kind of spread all over the world. So, uh, that, that's the way we see the mistake. That when, when it came to, you know, revising the Bhagavad Gita as it is, then one had to, one had to uh, of course, there's whole tons of mistakes were made by the previous editors and the typists and, the, and so forth, which are <laughs> real mistakes that need to be corrected. But then there's, you know, transcendental mistakes that the, that the guru make made. And you say, well, okay, he, he's made these mistakes to give us something to do, you know. In other words, to engage us. <laughs> you can think of it that way. They're not real mistakes. But however you think about it, they'll be commonly thought of as a mistake, like Jan Makarma made the Vyam. And he wanted them corrected. The point is, in a preaching movement, there's a whole thing with, well, how the book appears to the first-time reader. It's not just a book written by Mahabhagavats for Mahabhagavats. It's written by the Mahabhagavat for general consumption. And therefore, it has to have a certain polish, it has to have a certain you know, grammar and so many things. And Prabhupada said, one mistake murders the book. You know? So, of course, that includes mistakes by us, which were predominantly was in the book. But one mistake murders the book. So if Prabhupada leaves out one of the six opulences of Krishna, or, you know, the, oftentimes the, the mathematical calculations may be off, you know, the, the number of years Brahma lives and all these technical things. So big deal. You're doing it as a service. To, so so it, it'll be more acceptable in every... So that's the way we think about it, is that... Uh, in this special case, where you're, especially when you have a preaching movement. Otherwise, you know, you have just the, the Mahabhagavad speaking to some disciples or a hundred, a thousand disciples or, you know, internal devotees. Then, no matter what happens, you don't, you don't correct. You know, you don't, you don't correct. You can't, you, say, you don't say anything. It's just not proper. But, it, but in this case, where it's a service to, to polish it up, then you have to straddle that middle line. You know, okay, this is a Prabhupadism. Like, I'll give you an example. Um, <laughs> this is, uh, I don't know, I always thought this was famous because when I first heard it, it stuck in my mind. They're describing Vrindavan and there's the onomatopoetic sounds of the cuckoo. You know, I don't know if you know what an onomatopoeia is. An onomatopoeia, it's right there, I listened to the tape, it's, it probably says it, um, is a word that, that means what it sounds like. We have tons of them in English. Splash, the, the ringing of the bell, ring, 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 you know. We have them all the time. That's, a, that's an onomatopoeia. But, but the onomatopoeic sounds of the cuckoo, well, the cuckoo, no, is, is uh, singing a certain way. I think it refers to Krishna mimicking the cuckoo. But it's, but it's this, it, if you're in an eighth grade English class, you cross that out, I said, you know, it's wrong. It's a mistake. Well, there's no way in the world I would change that. That's, that's like a, a signature word of that passage in the, in, the, in the Krishna book. You know what I'm saying? The bodhis are waiting for it. You know, the Adamana poetic sounds. Of the <laughs> so you leave it. You leave it, even though by some standards it would be a mistake. But it's, but it's a, a Prabhupada flavor. The first canto, you'll find many, uh, Prabhupada says, uh, uh, and, and, and the, the, the universe is created by the Mahavishnu. Well, in, in subsequent cantos, we took that da out the Mahavishnu, the Govardhan Hill, you know. But it's a certain characteristic of those early writings, you leave it in. So this is all some, you know, judgment call for many years of experience of editing, what to do, what not to do, like that. So all I can say is that, uh, you know, a, a, a mistake is a, is it would be a serious, you know, lapse or something that, you know, you would, and that the, the, the Mahabhagavad doesn't make that kind of mistake. Yes, sir. <coughs> I don't know if you can answer this question or not, but I'm going to shoot anyway. In comparison to the original texts, of uh, which they book? speak about thousands of years how the texts are unchanged. How much change has trans transpired since Prabhupada's come? You have to talk about which book? Just generally, like say the Bhagavatam. 
Well, it, I mean, you can, you can easily find that out. You I mean, if you're talking about change from what Prabhupada originally had, uh, the first canto was changed quite a bit, but not as much as what was ch changed, say, in the, when Prabhupada uh, just dictated. Then you have a transcript, you know. Um, because Prabhupada went over those first candles and did, you know, some revision, some, and brought it to a certain state that you can see in the books that are printed or you can read it in the Veda base, you know, the Delhi Bhagavatams. So uh, then, you have to, then you have to ask, well, which, ed which edition? Because the first canto that came out in 72, uh, especially the second chapter of the first canto, there were, a lot, there were quite a few revisions in the translations. And you can, you can see that, oh, they were brought back closer to what Prabhupada originally had. You know, there was a, I mean, Hayagriva did a tremendous amount of, 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 of wonderful service. But, you know, if you go back to those early days, there was a more intimate relation there. There was a looser relation at one point, you know, and he, and he felt freer to do things that we would never do today. You know, take things out and add stuff, you know. So, um... He never, he never really accepted the cosmography. So you'll find the word solar system, which I don't know if Prabhupada ever actually used, instead of universe. It's a big difference. There's one sun in the solar system. Well, we knew that from the third grade. But that there's one sun in the universe? Um, that doesn't compute. He thought that was a big mistake and that people wouldn't accept it. So he took out a whole paragraph in the Bhagavad Gita, which has been restored. So if you really want to see uh, the state of things, now many people, you know, many critics think, oh God, look at all these changes and in a few years it'll be a whole different book, we won't recognize it. But the rate of, change, of, of, of revision that took place in 1983, when the main thing, has tapered off to practically one correction a year now. It's not like the Bhagavad Gita is constantly being revised. It's done, it's finished, it's what we have. You know, there's one or two things that come up every so often. So the change is, is, is pretty much done for the, many books. Go ahead. But uh, I can show you. You can come over. I'll show you my, my, my files with the changes marked in red. I hope it doesn't make you bloop. <laughs> Go ahead. My question is, um, you know, you and Jai Dwayta Maharaj are basically in charge, the princi principally in charge of the, the edits that take place within Prabhupada's books. So... Um, of course, that's like only this, in English. Don't this, forget there's this a whole farm. This is kind of like a sober question, but what's going to take place once you and Jai, Jai Dwayta Maharaj leave the planet? Very little. Very little. Very little. It, I mean, there's discussion about freezing it, but there's, but there's always like a misspelling that got through or something, you know? Mm. And I think the, me, the way in which it will happen will be, will be different. There'll be like, there should be, I think, a committee, you know, it should be shared. And it, does this really need to be changed? What do you think about this? Mm -hmm. Because the, 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 the books were produced in such a way that you had people who were co as competent as could be at the time, but they're not as competent as, as, as the, the devotees today. I'm talking like in the, sci the Sanskrit, you know, the formal books with all of the transliterations and everything. Like just yesterday, I, there's, this, there's this word, avyartakalatvam. It means don't waste time. It's one of the 26 qualities, not wasting time. Or one of those nine, I think, uh, ecstatic symptoms, you know, which are practical. Don't waste time. Always chant the holy name. So it's a small thing, but it's a change. If you, you, you uh, look it up in the database, just in the books, not in the Prabhupada quoting it in a lecture, you'll find like 30 or 40 times when that little phrase, avyartakalatvam, is used. And uh, A A V Y A R T H A. No, no diacritics in that first word. Well, one of them came out, which I had missed in the second canon, with a long A in the third, in the first, in the first word of Yarta Kalatvam. And one devotee pointed that out. So we'll fix it. Well, it's a change, and it's now you know 20, 20, 2019. It's being changed. Oh, you guys are still changing the books. Well, it's just, a, it's just a little error, you know what I'm saying? But that's the kind of thing we find mostly now, is little things like that that have to be adjusted. That can, yeah, that can, why shouldn't that be fixed when I'm gone and Jai Wai is gone? Which won't be that many years from now. It should be fixed. But, but more substantial things, uh, that, has, that will probably not be done, or very, very, very rarely. 
I mean, you know, uh, 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 changing phrases and pulling things out of the original transcript, you know. I'm trying to go through the whole Bhagavatam systematically. We've gone through first, second, and middle, middle of the third canto now. Uh, it's much, thank God, you know, Jaiwan Maharaj took over in the, for the sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth cantos, and there's practically nothing there because he was so competent and careful. But the fourth, the third, fourth, and fifth cantos, fifth canto was done it's part of the marathon. The devotees don't realize it's not just the CC. That was part of the marathon. So that's going to be tough. But uh, the idea is to restrict it tremendously after that. So, and, and even now, it's, you know, it's much rarer to find any major you know, correction going on. But I shared some with you, and then I'll end here, you know, with the, in the first cano. I mean, we, you know, it's, it's a... Uh, there's a whole debate going on, you know, and it has to be decided at the highest levels. Like the, like the, I don't know if I mentioned this one uh, translation in the, uh, in Kunti's prayers. You know, it's all about chanting the holy name sincerely, but the translation didn't reflect that. It was mistranslated. It's a very, you know, key verse. She's saying that those who were too progressively intoxicated and maddened by their attraction for opulence like good birth, wealth, physical beauty, and education uh, cannot chant your name with deep feeling, with sincerity. But the translation, you look it up now, I forget the number of it, but John uh, Maishoy, you look that up, and you see it doesn't say that. It says something about approaching. They can approach you uh, uh, Oh, my Lord, my dear, my dear Lord, your Lordship can easily be approached, easily be approached, key word, easily be approached, um, but only by those who are materially exhausted because, the sentence goes on, because those who are progressively intoxicated by these, with these four opulences cannot address you with deep feeling. That address you became approach you. And so the whole thing is, is, is kind of fudged, is out of focus, until you get into the purport and becomes very clear. Why shouldn't that translation be fixed? That's what Prabhupada had addressed. Somehow the first editor didn't see it, but approached. And so that's what I'm doing. I'm like finding these things, key things. I can show you some more if you want. All glories to the Prabhupada. Honey, we'll have to end there.